so my channel has been alive for a little over a year now which is a fucking miracle but last year i did my reactions and thoughts about the upcoming anime awards and just because i'm lazy i'm doing it again maybe this will become a yearly thing but that if i'm still alive next year as the introverted tiny asian boy that i am i have watched the majority of anime this season and can therefore give you a correct opinion with a zero percent chance of gaslighting because my budget is so much bigger this year, we're gonna use the official Crunchyroll Anime Awards this time and I will choose from the options that are given. Look at me going through character development, oh my god. As the bitch that I still am, we're gonna save the anime of the year to last, so let's start off with the best original anime. Be fucking for real. So you are about to tell me we didn't get any other anime originals this year, so we had to put Orbital Children here? This is like putting a magic corp on land, like how is this fair? Birdie Wing is just hot girls playing golf, the single-handedly most boring sport to watch. That ain't true, you fucking bitch. Yeah, sure, there are some good moments in the show, but everything feels so bland. They are trying so hard to turn golf into something exciting and entertaining, but any other sport would have been better. Healer Girl... Let's move on. Licorice Recoil is the only acceptable answer here. A funny little show that popped up during the summer season and I didn't think much of it. I didn't even plan to watch it, but I saw a clip on TikTok and when I see cute anime girls with guns, I'm kind of like a moth drawn to light. And no, it's not an addiction. The story and plot is amazing with the perfect amount of seriousness and comedic relief mixed through the 13 episodes of pure dopamine. All the characters are likable and they even managed to create a villain whose motives you can actually support. Well, you can support anyone you want, but without being classified as a psychopath at least. The character development is also amazing, like this chick was a total bitch in the beginning. Easy choice. Oh, as I said, easy choice. Okay, here we actually have an argument. I have sadly not gotten around to watch Stone Island yet, but it won't be relevant as Jojo always smashes it with character designs. Masanori Shino has done a great job putting these funky little men to life with some of the most iconic characters ever made. Just looking at this year with Stone Ocean, we didn't get disappointed. Yoilin looks hot, which is a hard thing to do with an art style meant for the most testosterone-filled men on the planet. Spy Family is a bit of a weak link here. Yes, Anya has become one of the biggest icons everywhere, especially in, of course, Japan. This child has become so easy to sell. This fictional kid has become so marketable, it would be impressive to avoid her. If we move away from Anya and look at the other cast, everyone has a very normal design. Nothing really stands out. Yori is that dominant mommy who would crush you as you said thank you, yes, but she doesn't have that extra touch when it comes to her appearance. It's her personality that makes her an interesting character. Same with Mr. Twilight. My boy Tengen is what he calls himself. Flamboyant. We got exactly what we waited for with this big beautiful muscular man and his three wife and his three wives which weirdly resembles the boys but we will let that slide. The demons also look cool with this one having a nice personality while homie kinda pulled the short end of the stick. Left him totally dehydrated. Edge runners really pulled out their best cards for this anime. Which was fucking best for them. With mainly Lucy and Rebecca standing out. But there is still one option that I just thought did it better overall. And that is this joint. Ranking of Kings has in my opinion one of the best character designs in a very long time. Each design sums up the character so well. Like look at Homie for example. You just know he has that juicy ass. The color palette, the vibrance, the contrast, and every other word that makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about just makes this perfect. For best animation, we can already just give it to Demon Slayer. A total outstanding performance when it came to all the battle scenes. I was hyped through the whole thing, I was shaking in my chair, I was nothing everywhere, it was a total mess, but it was so good. They know exactly how to prioritize the animation, and it was just a treat for my eyes, just like your mom. Attack on Titan could have been so great, but the hella slacked off this season. Don't get me wrong, the plot is absolutely amazing, but it doesn't have anything to do with the animation. That's just because Isayama is a fucking genius. Spy Family had very good animation for being a very comedic heavy anime. But that is what happens when you put Wit Studio to babysit Cloverworks. You get some good ass animation. Both Cyberpunk and Ranking of Kings had some good animation, but nothing crazy. In Edge Runner's case, it was the titties and the lonely, and in Ranking of Kings, it was the child, not the animation. Akibi's sailor uniform was something I stumbled upon because it looked like cute anime girls doing cute things, which is exactly what it was, but with some great animation. Whoa. For a show about a girl in a sailor uniform and toe sniffers, the animation felt too good. It just felt like Cloverworks had to make shit right after this horrendous mistake. But the thing is, we will never forgive you for this fucking bull- I'm not gonna speak about the nomination choices because I will literally go feral, so let's just focus on what they picked. Call of the Night was good, but it kinda felt like every episode was the fucking same. This girl is horny but can't talk about it, and this man wants to be horny but can't. Spy Family came out swinging, trying to keep up the reputation they have in the manga, and they did just that. It was exactly what we were 
were hoping for, no matter if you read the manga or not. As I said before, my dress up darling is ass. Like, let's be totally for real here. It's the most mid rom com out there, like, there's nothing that makes it stand out. And you know what I think about pussy ass main characters in rom coms, and do I really need to say more about Gojo? Yeah, she's cute. Well, she's underage. Now what? Yeah, boy, combing was really refreshing with some banger music. The concept with this old ass dude getting teleported to our times is perhaps not something new, but this show did it so tastefully. Him using his old Chinese strategies to make this blonde bitch popular is genius. And again, the music fucking slaps. Edge Runners was really good. I even tweeted out that I thought it was better than Chainsaw Man in every single way, which I truly believe, and if you don't, let's fight. The story was 10 times better than the game could have ever been, while still keeping the world of the game intact with familiar places and items. Little bit of a cheesy ending, but it is what it is. Kaguya-sama, okay, let's move on. Nah, but for real, nothing else really compares. Even if I think it's a bit overhyped, it still managed to sum up the story we have been waiting for for so long. It had such a strong ending that everything else kinda became irrelevant. Aren't they cute? Oh, Made in Abyss kinda popped off too. Yeah, here, take a cookie. Well, I'm gonna get flamed. I don't like the rumbling. Fuck you. It just didn't hit me like the other ones did, and I was frankly kinda disappointed. And it was also a shit choice, as this season doesn't even have the main part of the rumbling in it. Shiki shiki ban ban, however. Ladies and gentlemen, no, we talking music. The song is so catchy, and with the visuals, it goes fucking hard. It even started a whole TikTok dance trend with VTubers out there busting out all their best moves. They killing this shit low-key. Both Spy Family and Demon Slayer have openings I really enjoy. Even if everyone wanted Lisa to come back and do the opening for season 2, I think Amir smashed it. It really just fit Tengen's whole vibe. Talking about fitting a vibe, official high dandism really put the head on the nail with mixed nuts across your face. Naked Hero though is so fucking good, I can literally not explain how good it actually is. It's just too good, man. Akuma no Ki. You know, I'm not really good at remembering just the audio work in a show that I watch. Good music for me is something that stands out as I actually notice the music with the combination of the scene that is playing. For example, Steins Gate did this multiple times and that's why I classify that as one of the best animes ever made. Cyberpunk really surprised me with the music. Ratboy managed to create a good song with the lyric system of Alvin and the Chipmunks. Made in Abyss with Kevin Penkin always do bits, but I have to go for Cyberpunk here. Attack on Titan did his thing too, but you know, that's expected. I have explained my hate for Bubble in my anime hot takes video link in bio, but it deserves to get blasted again. I went into this with high expectations as the whole anime community were biting their toenails for this to release, just for it to be the most mid movie to come out. It really just stands between One Piece Red and Yu to Kaisen Zero, and I haven't seen Red. That's why I'm gonna pick Zero, just because I thought it was a really good movie. Giving well-deserved backstories for the main characters, as well as playing its own storyline while doing it. Animation was good, voice acting on point and you know as a fellow believer that Yu Yusu Kaisen is mid, this was actually good. <laughs> what should I say? This is only between New Genesis for me as I'm not a strong believer in the whole the rumbling supremacy and I can't really remember the other choices which says a whole lot. Here I have to give it to my man Hiroyuki Imashi as I think Cyberpunk is levels above the other choices. To be an original show with only a bad game to go off, he did fucking amazing. Every episode felt like a roller coaster of emotion with stunning visuals, world building and character. All respect to my man. We kinda have to go with Eren here. <laughs> Damn, why you look so sad? I think it's disrespectful to put Morin and Lloyd here because they don't come slightly close combined. Eren Jaeger is a name that has become so famous that even non-anime fans have heard it at least once. Even when he's not even present in the majority of the season, he's still the main thing talked about. Homie really is the main character. When I'm thinking best supporting character, I think who can be replaced and wouldn't make a difference. And with that conclusion, only Anya was left. Yes, Rebecca left a strong impression, but she wasn't really a driving factor in the plot. Same with Tengen, Hayasaka, and your. The closest we come is with Kage, but I still think he could be replaced with not much of an impact. If Anya were to be replaced, the main focus of the show would disappear. She's not even a side character at this point. Anya. Okay, let's go. Best action, cyberpunk. Best comedy, Kaguya-sama in dub. Best drama, AOT. Best fantasy, Mushoku Tensei. Best romance, Love is War. Have to go with Anya here again. Yuki Kaji always does amazing as Eren, but Asumi Tanesaki just captured Anya perfectly. Yeah, I didn't watch any dub. And now, for the best anime of the year. Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Bro, how much are you gonna suck off Edge Runner? Thanks for watching, you made it to the end. Follow me on Twitter if you want to, it's a choice, but if you don't do it, I will find you. And this video looking kinda spicy, don't you think? Yeah, that's all for me. See ya!